So it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite time of year right now on the farm, which is September, because we're harvesting, pretty much everything is, is full production right now. We're harvesting tomatoes, cucumbers, celery, the whole arsenal of vegetables are being harvested, which of course I love and I love eating it. Uh, but we're also planting for the winter and the, well, actually fall planting is pretty much done. We're planting for the winter right now in greenhouses. And it's a time where even though we're doing all that harvesting, the, the actual like energy of the farm is slowing down a lot. It's relax. It's more relaxing than it is in the spring. All the pressure is mostly gone. Um, all we got left is just to fill in whatever space is left on the farm with winter crops that will mature by November 7th in my climate. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm planting kale that will hopefully be mature by November 7th and we'll harvest it December, January, February, somewhere in there. And um, what I'm talking about is winter farming or winter harvesting, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of different terms out there. But I'm obsessed with it because I love what I do. I love growing vegetables. I'm obsessed with it. And I love eating all this stuff. And I don't want it to end in the wintertime. So winter farming, when I first heard about it and I first heard about Elliot Coleman and what he's doing, because he's a guy who kind of brought this to America at least. Um, I was just obsessed. I watched every video I could possibly find about winter farming and um he's pretty big deal because he took a lot of european techniques and brought them to america where it's a lot colder um you know he's growing in maine which is really similar climate to here uh in wyoming i'm sure they get down to negative 15 negative 20 almost every winter fahrenheit by the way and we get down to that cold last year we got down to negative 30 and he made it possible to do this stuff in greenhouses like what i'm doing right now and it's kind of a revolutionary concept in my opinion because it means there's a possibility of having fresh local food all year round even in ridiculously cold climates like ours and in a really short growing season like ours i'm pretty sure elliot coleman is his own five uh I'm pretty sure they, where they're at is a zone five or something close to that. And we're in a basically zone five, zone four, whatever. A lot of that is kind of just a, a guideline. Each climate has its own little nuances. But I'm obsessed with this winter farming stuff. And um, because the vegetables taste better. A lot of what we grow in the summertime is actually the same stuff we grow in the winter because in Wyoming, uh, heat loving crops don't do as well. So stuff like kale, carrots, cilantro, parsley, all that stuff, we grow a lot more of it in the summertime because it's still really cold here in the summertime. And so it's, it's fun for me to do this because it's just like the last little job of the season other than harvesting. And then once this is done, all we got to do is harvest whatever we want, whenever we want, somewhere between November 7th and February 4th, which is what's called the Persephone period. And that's the time where daylight is less than 10 hours and plants don't really grow at all. Um, you know, you're going to have to Google winter farming, Elliot Coleman to learn a lot more about that, but because I can't explain all that in this video, but in my climate, that's that's the date of less than 10 hours of daylight. And uh, if you figure that out in your climate, you could do all this stuff too. And there's a whole winter planting calendar, which I'll put a link to that in the description too, just in case you happen to have a greenhouse and you want to try some of this because there's still time in most climates to plant a whole bunch of the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video. Probably not kale. I'm actually kind of risking it right now by doing this this late, but I'm going to try. But uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can grow to be mature by November and then eat it all winter. And if you're in the south, it's just going to be a hell of a lot easier for you than what I'm doing here. 
Um, I think if you're in like South Carolina, you could probably grow broccoli through the winter and stuff. You know, we have an extreme climate here, so we have to be pretty picky about what we grow, but there's still a good 10, 10 crops I could eat fresh in January. And I'm just obsessed with that. I think it's such a game changer that I, I want to see more people doing it. And that's why I'm making this video. I want to talk about it. And uh, if you find any of that interesting, keep watching. I'm going to share a couple of tips that you could do if you have a greenhouse of some kind or even if you don't. And I'm going to go over the crops that we're planting right now to harvest in January. So stay tuned and enjoy. So, this is my personal favorite winter crop. It's called Claytonia or miner's lettuce. And it's this really weird looking salad green that actually grows in the mountains right around here in Wyoming, in the Rocky Mountains, Colorado, Montana. I've had ranchers come to my booth in the wintertime and absolutely recognize this plant because they've seen it in the mountains when they're taking horses and cattle up there and it's delicious it's super weird uh it looks like i'm sure i'll do videos later on when this is mature because this is already too late to seed more of this so we've got plants in paper pot trays that will transplant into ground later on but it's one of my favorites because it tastes delicious and it is unbelievably tough. This stuff went through negative 30 last year without batting an eyelash. Nothing happened to it. It was fine. Um, it's a little tricky to grow. Uh, it's hard to get it to germinate real thick. Um, so I kind of germinate it like I germinate carrots, which means I pay attention to it a lot the first week that it's seeded in the ground. And then this year I'm trying it in paper pot trays. So I have extra just in case the stuff in the ground doesn't germinate well and I could just plant these plants. Um, but it's so good. It tastes like lettuce, a lot like lettuce and like um, maybe like a sunflower shoot combined or something. Um, but it's so cold hardy. That's why it grows in the mountains around here. It gets really cold in the mountains and it's just awesome. Um, we're going to grow three or four beds of it this year, uh, just because it's so popular and it works as like a lettuce in the winter time. Cause real lettuce is a lot harder to do in the winter. I'm going to try some real lettuce, but it's tougher. I've had a lot more problems with it, but Claytonia is an awesome one. You buy one seed packet, it'll last you a couple of years cause the seeds are ridiculously small. Um, and they, uh, it is kind of expensive, but it's awesome. Um, just because of it's as tough as spinach, if not more, and gives you tons of salad. Um, we'll be doing lots of videos about it later on this year, showing you the harvesting process and everything. But miner's lettuce is a, you've got to grow it. If you have a greenhouse of any kind, just throw some seeds in the ground. If you're let, if you're like a zone six, they're lower than me. You could probably still plant it right now for a couple more weeks. But um, this one was seeded uh, like a week ago, about 10 days ago. So that's like September 1st for me. Um, it's September 12th now. So probably a little too late for most people, but still worth looking into. You could probably plant it into October in some cli in most climates south of here. But awesome one to do so this is parsley uh, i've already talked about it a bunch in my other videos but we grow a lot of parsley here and the reason is it's ridiculously cold hardy grows really well in cold temperatures which we have a lot of here so i've had parsley in my greenhouses for the past three years and it almost always survives perfectly through the winter um and what I mean by survive is it's like, if it's negative 30, I'm going to want to harvest all of this before that because it will get pretty damaged in an unheated greenhouse like this. But it'll still survive and it'll grow back really thick in March and April. So you get tons of harvests up until that really big cold snap. And then 
it goes dormant for a little while and then it comes back like crazy once we get more than 10 hours of daylight again in February. So parsley is a bomb proof one. It's more bomb proof than cilantro in my experience. And it tastes really sweet and delicious. So I love it. I mean, I've talked about it a lot already on this channel. I don't want to go over it again and again and again, but there's a reason why we plant it all the time because it takes a long time to grow. A lot of people don't have it in their gardens reliably, and it just turns into this big bush of delicious herby goodness. So that's parsley. All right, so here's a crop you're going to hear me talk about a million times on this channel. I already have talked about it a million times, and that is spinach. Number one winter crop. We plant it. It goes through negative 30, no problem. It tastes ridiculously sweet once it gets cold. And we'll get two or three cuts out of this one bed. We have nine beds this year in the far on the farm that we'll be harvesting from. Uh, so far, six are planted. We started planting this a uh, week ago. No, about 10 days ago. This spinach is about 10 days old. And it'll be huge by November. Just big plants. This will just be a carpet of spinach. And it's a bomb-proof one. You got to do it if you're winter growing, no matter where you are. Just got to do it. Um, and... You know, it's relatively easy. Once you start getting colder nighttime temperatures, it germinates no problem. We don't have to worry about it too much. And um, it's just amazing. So uh, this one, it's the number one you got to do in the wintertime. Um, can't lose with spinach. So definitely try spinach. So on either side of me are carrots. They were planted around August 1st in my climate. That's the day that I got to get all my winter carrots planted or else it's pretty much not going to be enough time in the growing season to get them big enough by November. But these are going to be perfect. This is the best batch I've had so far in my farming career. We've got six beds of winter carrots in these two caterpillar tunnels. And um, this is like... For my booth in the wintertime, this is what brings people back every week, is winter carrots. Call them candy carrots. They taste like there's sugar injected into them because they're unbelievably sweet. Um, and I think part of that is the variety we're growing, but they just get sweeter and sweeter as the winter comes. And uh, once you get good at growing carrots, which I'm going to talk about a lot on this channel because I think it's easiest way to fill your fridge, root cellar, whatever you got to store food. Um, by growing a garden, but um, once you can grow carrots well, you could do this no problem because it's the same technique as growing them in the summer. It's just getting the timing right and growing them under a little bit of pr protection. So carrots are a must, got to do carrots. So the last one I'm going to talk about is kale, which is what I was planting at the beginning of this video, and it's getting watered in right now, and I'm getting watered in too. Uh, so I'm going to make this quick, but kale is a real good one too. It's bomb proof. Um, not quite as bomb proof as like spinach and Claytonia. I found that it gets pretty wacky, like past negative 20. It's pretty rough. And when it grows back, it usually goes to seed in March and April. But I always try it because sometimes you have a mild winter and you might get a really nice harvest through January or whatever. And this is literally just the same kale I grow outside. It's called winter boar. I've tried the special winter kale before and I don't really think it tastes that good um, personally and it just gets kind of weird but I'll probably try it again eventually because I think part of that is just my soil is still getting good but kale um, we planted this like late July we seeded it late, late July and these plants are not super healthy and that's because my nursery is not so good yet but um, I'm pretty sure this will work. Uh, something will we'll harvest something by November. Um, but uh, yeah, you got to try kale too. That's a really easy one. If you get it growing big enough, you could, no matter what, you could harvest it into December in a greenhouse, no problem. So, got to try kale. So, if you want to do this and you want to eat fresh vegetables in January, it really helps to have a greenhouse of some kind and 
Yeah, there's ways to do it with a cold frame. Uh, depending on your climate, it works for sure. But um, a greenhouse, in my opinion, is the easiest because um, you can just fit a lot more in the greenhouse. You know, a cold frame, you're going to have, you know, a four by four little section and you're going to eat that all up by in like a week. You know, the one thing about winter growing or harvesting is you need a lot of space because nothing is growing. So if you want to actually eat spinach all winter, you need a lot of it in a protected environment. So a little greenhouse like what I have behind me, um, these are called Caterpillar Tunnels by Farmer's Friend. I'll leave a link to them in the description. Um, these are so cheap uh, compared to a high tunnel, which is what I grow a lot of my stuff in. These are so cheap and easy to put up. Uh, any homesteader could do it. Um, and it's just a couple thousand dollars or something as opposed to a lot more money and a lot more time to build a high tunnel. Um, a real high tunnel you know, takes a hundred hours or something to build it. And that depends on which size you want. It doesn't necessarily take a hundred hours, but in my opinion, it's a lot more effort and a lot more stressful to build than one of these things. Um, you know, these things, I have them in the 100 foot by 16 foot lengths. There's two of them on the farm, but I'm a farm. So I need it as big as possible, but you could get them as small as 25 foot and 14 foot wide. You can put that up in a weekend and, um, they ship it to you in a kit. You don't have to really do any thinking. They do all of the, they have the, um, how to assemble, uh, packet in the packaging. And it's really easy to put together. It is, these took me about 10 hours to put together. And that's the same amount of greenhouse space that I have in high tunnels, which took me literally 250 hours to build two high tunnels. So just, that's the trade-off you're getting with these. Um, they're not as windproof for sure. Uh, I'm going to have to beef mine up a little bit to survive our wind here in Wyoming. But um, if I was homesteading, which I'm not because I have a farm, um, I would build these things. And you could do all your summer growing in here. You could grow your summer cucumbers and tomatoes and stuff in here really easily. And then you could grow winter stuff. Um, and have a whole bunch just for your family. And uh, there's all sorts of fun little uh, additions you can make to them on their website. I just went with the bare bones because this is sort of like a uh, low end greenhouse for me on my farm. I'm going to be building a lot more fancy ones coming up here, but um, I, I love these things for how cheap they are. And um, you could do everything I'm talking about in this video in one of these. I've already done it through one winter and it worked fine. I would just say definitely orient them east to west because the sunlight and you make sure you get sun in the winter wherever you put them because I oriented these um, north south and they don't get as warm, nearly as warm. Um, there's probably a 10, 15 degree difference in warmth when the sun does come out in the winter. That matters a lot for how well the vegetables grow. Um, and I found that everything in here grows a lot slower because I oriented that way. And I think that's why. Um, so you want to orient them east, west, so you get a lot more sun in the winter time. But other than that, you could do everything I said in this video. You just need some frost covers to protect them when it gets negative 20 or whatever. But um, I've gone over that a little bit in the videos. But the whole concept with Elliot Coleman style of winter growing is you get the crops mature by the last 10 hour day. And then you cover them with one layer of white row cover, which you could get in a lot of different places. You get the lightest layer of row cover. Um, and that usually will do the trick for most of these crops. You know, if you get down to negative, really seriously below zero, you're probably going to want a couple layers of that row cover. Just because the more protection you have, the more the crops are going to do well. And then in my climate, usually there's only a couple weeks of that cold. And then you can take the extra layers off and you're pretty good. Um, you know, it's not, there's going to be a learning curve with this. That's why I'm making this video is I want to see more people doing it. Um, and I don't think there is that many people doing it. Um, but there is a way to do it. And uh, the, the more you experience growing like this, um, the more I think you'll enjoy it and you'll learn how to do it better. I'm still learning a lot. Um, 
So, but these Caterpillar tunnels are very cheap, easy to put together. I highly recommend you do that. Um, if you already have a greenhouse, it should be pretty easy for you to do all the things I'm talking about. You just got to buy the right seeds and stuff. And I didn't even talk about nearly all the winter crops in this video um, because we're still going to be planting a few more like uh, Tokyo Bacana, which is a really fast growing brassica. That's a good one. I only talked about the really easy ones in this video that are tough, um, good beginner crops. And, uh, but all you need is a greenhouse, and a little bit of protection inside and you can do this stuff. So give it a shot if you have a greenhouse. If not, buy one of these. So if you wanna set up a garden in your backyard that can grow all the crops I talked about in this video without having to weed or really put a whole lot of effort in every week, I highly recommend you check out my gardening course at the link in the description. I go over everything you need to know from setting up your garden in a no-dig style where you don't have to do weeding like I do on the farm and plant spacing, crop planting, watering, everything you need to know from seed to harvest on pretty much all the crops I grow here on the farm which is sort of the foundational skills you need to do all the winter stuff that I talked about in this video. Highly recommend you check it out. It's Gardening 101 at the link in the description and start thinking about growing a garden right now because it takes a little bit of planning to do really well next year because I know we're at the end of our growing season, but if you had a hard growing season and you tried gardening and it didn't work out for you, you got a bunch of weeds, this method of growing is for you because all it takes is a few short days of hard work to set up and then you just pretty much plant and seed on schedule and then forget about it and come harvest when you need to eat. That's pretty much as simple as it is once you get it all set up. So highly re recommend you check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share with anybody who you think might find it interesting. And I will see you in the next one.